Hey everyone, this week we are learning about photojournalism. So you are telling a story with your photography. We're going to go through first and see some famous photojournalists. Some of these images are a little um, raw and can be a little um, difficult to look at. So if you find that so, just skip ahead. Um, some of them are about everyday life, but others are about trauma and social injustices around the world through history. Um, start with Margaret Burkwhite. So she lived and photographed during some of the more um, difficult times in history through um, segregation and the protests and then World War II with the Nazi encampments and she documented these um, times and moments in history. Alfred Einstadt on the left, um, he just happened to be in that place. This is a very famous phot photograph and it was when the um, sailors had returned and they had just announced over the speakers that World War II was, um, they had won. So celebrating that. And then he also did some photography with documenting celebrities and their lifestyles. So you can see Marilyn Monroe. Steve McCurry still producing today. Um, third world countries, uh, photojournalism through primarily through National Geographic very influential photographer. You've probably seen a lot of his work. Kenji Nagai, um, you can see he documented a lot of protests and a lot of tragic events. The same with Chris Honduras. Um, and you can see where he was pro um, documenting this girl's pain and anguish um, at the situation she was in and her parents had just passed. So he's trying through a very difficult situation to show the world that these injustices and the pain and to get people to feel um, and to want to do something about it essentially. Altif Quadri, he um, like to shoot primarily in black and white. And the left is um, a school in a third world country where um, they their school just burnt down, but they are still attending. They came back and they're still learning and it's almost a message of hope. Like even after tragedy, you can still become, you know, you can still come back into a community and move on. Hanzo Mayeth did a lot with Life magazine and documented um, everyday life around um, the time period, um, mostly um, 50s and 60s in the United States. Dorothea Lang, you can see um, she did a lot throughout the Great Depression. You can see the left with uh, one of the famous photographs, uh, photojournalist uh, pictures, and this mother um, protecting her children. She agreed to ha do the photograph as long as her children's faces were hidden. And then the right documenting the dangerous perils of working the steel buildings um, during this time and just, you know, how dangerous and scary that was. Lucian Perkins, more modern day, um, a lot of protests, some peaceful and some not so peaceful. Um, Carol Gussie, still documenting um, basically a lot of social injustices and um, the plights that people go through with tragedy and different situations. And some things are really difficult to see, but if these people weren't documenting them, how would we know and how would we help or change? 
Steven Alvarez, a different type of photojournalist. Um, he himself is featured in a lot of his images and he goes around the world and a lot of hiking and a lot of rock climbing and scaling and does a lot of photojournalism through that method. So it's a different type of documenting. It's a nature um, documentation. So John H. White uh, definitely captured more of the joyful events and the moments, Mother Teresa, blessing, um, and uh, just in the Bronx on the right, having fun and living their everyday lives. So what I'm going to ask you to do is a little different. We discussed how photojournalism is telling a story and I want you to tell your story of what is what your life is like right now what are you going through what are you feeling with this social distancing and day 37 of being at home um, you know there's a lot that's going on mentally physically whether you're keeping up with the news or everyone's feeling um, very sad or very emotional um, even if we know there's an end in sight it's difficult to to do and what I would like you to do is um, photo document um, two to three images of your situation and, and document yourself there's two ways of doing it the first way so social distancing um, having that separation. You can do it with black and white, you can do it in color. You know, similar, you can show it in many different ways. You can do it without people. You can show with a literal six foot or a mask. You know, the washing of the hands and the protocols that we're being expected to do to keep us safe. Or, if you don't want to do that, you can do what's called a um, flat photograph where essentially you're going to compile things that are essential to you right now. What's keeping you going? What's making you um, able to cope and live your life in this situation, these quarantine situations. So you can see a lot of different variety here. Um, and essentially what you'll do is you'll pick between five and ten things and lay it all out and then do an aerial view um, photograph. And this is your photo document of um, photojournalism for your social distancing. So I can't wait to see what you all do and try to be as creative as you can but true to yourself and who you are as a photographer and I can't wait to see what you do but um, let me know if you need any help and I hope if any of you need to talk you're, um, you know that you can you can email me um, and I miss you